Um, hi, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm going to be talking about um, what diamonds and their mineral inclusions can tell us about how our continents on Earth have formed and how they've stabilized, so how their long-term stability um, has been created. And this has important implications then also for um, habitability on planets. Um, and so understanding how continents have maintained their long-term stability and using diamonds um, to do that is a very important factor to understand whether other planets perhaps um, could be um, habitable. Um, so I, what I'm showing here is just a map showing the, all the oldest continents on Earth. So continents that have been stable for more than 2.5 billion years are known as cratons. Um, and so this is, um, all these cratons are shown um, in, the, in these pink outlines. And so the diamonds that I'll be talking about today are here from West Africa. But so the majority of diamonds on Earth are found in these old cratonic areas. Um, so for example, the, the diamonds in Canada are here from the Slave Craton. Um, South Africa, where I'm from, uh, we have the Carpthal Craton and then also Zimbabwe. And then the very famous Argyle mine is up here in northwestern, um, northwestern Australia. So why, um, how do these continents maintain their long-term stability? So there's still quite a bit of debate in the literature um, about whether the thickening of these continents and the establishment of their thick cratonic keels is um, either through deep processes, such as upwelling of these mantle melts in perhaps a mantle plume, or through subduction of oceanic plates, so more superficial processes and recycling of um, oceanic crust. So both these processes are thought to contribute um, towards um, continent stability and the formation of these old cratons. And so the way that these continents remain stable for more than 2.5 billion years is by having this thick cratonic root. And so it's really important to us to understand how these thick cratonic roots were in fact established and how they've remained stable uh, over time. And so this is where diamonds come in. Uh, so the majority of Earth's diamonds form in these cratonic areas, so in the lithospheric keel below these really old cratons. So the majority of the world's diamonds form in this environment. The diamonds that Evan spoke about yesterday, the super large diamonds, these are now, we now know that they come from much deeper, from the transition zone or the lower mantle. And so these bl large blue diamonds um, here from the lower mantle and the clipper diamonds that Evan spoke about here in the transition zone. So while diamonds can tell us a lot about very deep earth processes, the diamonds that I'm focusing on today are from the lithospheric keel, and they can inform us about how continents maintained their long-term stability um, because they're forming here um, in these uh, cratonic roots. Uh, so the diamonds that we studied um, are these beautiful yellow diamonds from West Africa. Um, and unfortunately, we had to break out their inclusions in order to study them. So we had to break them open and get their inclusions out. Um, and then, um, so I've just shown some electron microscope images at the bottom of what these sulfide inclusions that we broke out of the diamonds, what, the, what they look like. And so we analyzed them for their rhenium osmium and their sulfur isotopes. Um, and so the reason why we want to study their sulfur isotopes is because sulfur happens to be a very important tracer for early Earth processes. So we know that before 2.5 billion years ago, um, solar UV radiation caused fractionation of the isotopes in the, um, of sulfur isotopes in the atmosphere. On the other hand, after 2.5 billion years, we don't see that fractionation anymore. So modern sulfur, modern atmospheric sulfur is unfractionated, whereas prior to 2.5 billion years ago in the Archean, uh, the sulfur isotopes became fractionated. And so this then would, can become an important tracer for sufficient processes making its way into the cratonic root and potentially being taken up um, into diamonds. And so the diamonds that we studied, the sulfide inclusions within these diamonds from West Africa, they all contain this fractionated sulfur signature. So they show to us that the sulfur that was incorporated into these inclusions, at one point it was sulfur in the atmosphere that was then um, incorporated as sediments on the ocean floor and then subducted um, into the continental keel. So this then becomes a very important tracer for tracking Archean tectonic processes. So we can use sulfur isotopes to potentially look for differences in how different cratonic keels were stabilized, either through um, deep mantle melting or potentially tracking subduction by using these fractionated sulfur isotopes. 
Um, and so the reason why all this becomes important is that we need plate tectonics and stable continents because it's one of the key factors to determine habitability um, on our planet um, and also on other planets as we continue our search for life uh, through the solar system and, and the universe. Um, and so I'll just leave it there uh, by saying, you know, well, hopefully this can tell us whether, you know, Matt Damon is chilling by himself on Mars or whether there, there may be some, um, some other life that, that we can discover there. Thank you very much.